Hey, I'm Arlie with Bike Shop Girl, and this is the new cycling-specific camera from Cyclique called the Fly 6 Pro. In this video, I'm going to cover what makes a cycling-specific camera unique, why I don't use them very often, but why the Fly 6 Pro may be the first one to change that. So cycling specific cameras have one purpose, to document your rides in case something happens. Oh, come on. Maybe that's a pothole, a bad driver, or worst case scenario, a hit and run. The first thing I wanna cover is what the key differences are between an action camera and a cycling specific camera. The first most obvious one is the form factor which is designed to mount to a bike, either on your seat post or your handlebar. They have built-in bike lights. You're gonna have red on the rear and white on the front with various blinking options that do affect your battery life. Speaking of battery life, the cycling specific cameras have a much longer battery life than an action camera, averaging four to six hours. And this depends on your camera and light settings, but you're gonna have less thrills. You don't have a screen to look at. There's not as many options to pick from and the battery is built in. So you get longer runtime, but there might be some sacrifices. Another really important thing for me for cycling cameras is footage lock or incident reporting. If the camera is leaned past 30 degrees while recording in say a crash or your bike has fallen over, that footage is locked in the camera and it's gonna continue to record until you stop it. It can't be deleted until you plug it into a computer. There's something called loop recording where your camera automatically starts a new clip after a predefined amount of time, like three, five, or 10 minutes. This is available on most modern action cameras and pretty invaluable for cycling cameras because it affords you two things. First, it ensures that your memory card doesn't fill up as it will overwrite the oldest segment once it runs out of room. The second thing it does is it allows you to have smaller file sizes to work with. So say you just need that 20 second clip from a two hour bike ride. In normal settings, you're probably gonna have 20 to 30 minute file sizes, which are huge. You're gonna to wanna to download that to a computer. But when you have these smaller bite-sized segments, you can quickly download that to your phone, get the segment you need, and send it off to your city or police department. When I'm using an action camera without loop record, I hit record, and then it runs until I hit stop. Most cameras do make 20 to 30 minute segments, but that's still a gigantic file size. The downfall is that you do need to save your files for future use so they aren't overwritten. Speaking of using your footage, every good cycling camera has a good phone app behind it. It allows someone that isn't a video editor to pull the footage and be able to quickly use it. Now that we have covered all the key features of a cycling camera, let's talk about why I haven't used them except on long road rides. Simply put, I have found the footage to be pretty subpar compared to action cameras of the same price. Why should I go with a very niche product if I don't need that crazy battery life because my rides are pretty quick around the city? Yes, dealing with a GoPro or Insta360 definitely is more of a hassle, but historically, it's given me better footage. Well, the Fly 6 may be the cycling camera I've been waiting for, and it's why I paid full price for it the moment they announced it. So I've only been able to ride with this a handful of rides over the last week. There is a lot to unpack on this new camera, so I'm really gonna focus only on the features that matter to me, and I'll put a link below to the website for you to read through all of the specs. The price is 349 US dollars. It's not at all affordable, but if it covers you in a hit and run or solves that huge infrastructure problem in your community, 
to me, it's worth it. The video footage is really improved, which is the main reason I'm making this YouTube video. You can now get a max of 4K at 30 frames per second with built-in image stabilization to help keep motion blur out of your footage and get more crisp footage and better dynamic range or how well the camera handles that super bright and super dark contrast. And the last thing I wanna show you is the field of view, which is wider at 145 degrees, giving the camera a better chance of picking up things as they go by you. The battery life is advertised at seven hours with 1440p video settings and a light running in the organic setting. I plan on testing the 4K video with no lights, and I hope to get three to four hours of runtime, which paired with the better video footage would make this my new go-to cycling camera. Now, the last thing I'm excited about, but it isn't a product feature, is that Cyclic seems to be finally taking themselves seriously. Cyclic in the past has, well, a terrible customer service. Their reviews are getting better and better. And the battery wasn't serviceable, wasn't replaceable. This camera now has a serviceable battery by sending it back to Cyclic. My hope is Cyclic can grow enough to get some service providers in market. So I'm not sending this unit back to Australia. Cyclic has also made great updates to their phone and desktop app over the last couple of years making it easier and faster to use. That's super important to me to recommend a cycling specific camera because it needs to be easy to pull footage and quickly make a police or city report. Now, with all that being said, I'm not giving this a full review yet. I do have a few more tests and videos I'm gonna be working on over the next couple of weeks. I'm gonna test the battery life and also how quickly someone can go from camera to reporting something to our town website. In a perfect world, you would be running two of these cameras, one on the back and one on the front, which is $700. I'm gonna need to put a lot more hours of testing in before I can finalize a review to make that recommendation. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, make sure to hit subscribe and leave a comment. Love to hear from you. And also check out some of these other cycling camera videos here to get you started. Until next time, stay well, stay good, and remember to bike more and worry less.